What's going on, everybody? It is January 18th, Thursday. We've got a four-game slate that looks awful on the surface, and I'm hoping that it ends up being not awful and digs out of the just awful hole from yesterday. Um, just a brutal day of fantasy. Most of the chalk missed, so you know, guys like Deontay Davis were terrible. You know, Curry and Westbrook underperformed. Um, and then we had, uh, the, you know, the news that sunk me almost immediately. Jordan Bell going down on play number one of the Bulls. It's just, you know, it happens. You hate being on the other side of it. And it's not a huge, like, ultimately not the like the biggest deal in the world that it happened. You know, he was 60% owned in the big tournament. But, I mean, that's still giving 40% of the field... Like, I don't know, a 25-point head start. Uh, I mean, it makes it really difficult to find your way back to the cut line without hitting everything. Like, how often do you, like, I mean, really, you need to be, you need to think about how often are you 20-plus points ahead of the cut line. Like, that's just a monster night. So, I was terrible. Not surprised. Uh... The lower, lowest owned guy I had was Drew Holiday. Came close to value, but was still only at like four and change. Um, I'll take it. But let's dive into this uh, four game slate with some weirdness in two of these games. First up is Celtics and Sixers. Uh, oh, one other note. I bought a new computer yesterday. So not going to go live tonight. Um, four game slate. You know, I'm just not really feeling it. There's only so much you can say about a four-game slate. Uh, but we'll be back Friday, and Friday night will be the first run on the new on the new machine. So, yay. Thanks to all of you guys. You guys are the reason that it happened. Uh, Celtics. I have them with a 108.5 implied total, <laughs> favored by eight points. Um, this is with the assumption that Kyrie does, in fact, play. The Sixers are going to not have J.J. Redick. Obviously, this can change. This line is not out there right now, but, you know, took my shot. So, I like Kyrie. Um, I don't see any particular reason why it would be a bad idea to have him. He had 38 in his last game. Um, he's been, you know, a couple games, 37 or higher. You need him to get to 41, which is a little tricky, uh, he's he's just sort of like safe-ish. He's got a big game in him coming up where he just shoots the lights out and goes for it, I think. Um, this might not be it, but I like it. Now, Horford, on the other hand, 7,400 on FanDuel and 7,000 on DK, so you'll need 37 from Horford. Hit it in the last one, you know, 35 in the game before that. Um, let's see, let's think about this here. I like the idea of him pulling Embiid out of the paint. Embiid is not exactly the best defender in space, um, which makes it a little interesting to me. I do like Horford here. And while I don't want to go crazy because I don't think the price has a ton of value in it, um, I wouldn't be shocked if I end up with him at center. Depends how the rest of this shakes out, but like something about it makes me think that he's in for a good night tonight. Have they played? Have they played at all? They did, right? I think Embiid sat. If I remember that correctly, I'm really proud of myself. Why is, why is nobody selected? Alright, Horford, Philly. Oh, they played three times. I'm a moron. <laughs> I'm an absolute idiot. So he went for 42 here in the middle game. Did Embiid play? He Embiid played on October 20th and January 11th. Horford... 
Okay, so Horford's 40-point game was the one without Embiid. But he still had 35 in the January 11th game, which would be, you know, right on value. And on a four-game slate, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Jalen Brown, uh, 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. So you're looking for 28. Hit it in the last one. He's had two 30-point games in his last five. Yeah, I mean, the, that price seems fine. It's really hard sledding, uh, trying to figure out what's going to pop on the Celtics. And then Jason Tatum, 5,200 and 5,400. Um, a 5,200 number looks good, so he'd need 26. Man, outside of that 47-point outburst, no Horford. Not really the best lately. What are we seeing here? Um, yeah, he's been down a little bit from a minutes perspective. Or not a, like a minutes played perspective, but his per minute numbers have been trending in the wrong direction. Let's take a look at him. Yeah, he's, you know, he's having these peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, and it seems like the peak is uh, is not getting quite as high as it did before. And that makes sense to me. You know, He's going to be running into the rookie wall right now. Um, but at the same time, you know, there are still some peaks. And that's a decent price for a guy that, you know, while Horford was out, that's, a, that's an important caveat. But it's a guy that can put up 47 fantasy points in a game. There's, he's got that sort of offensive skill set. So I think I would say that I would go Horford, Brown, Irving, Tatum in terms of like my ignoring price, you know, like uh, pound for pound type ratings. I would go, yeah, Brown, Horford, Irving, Tatum. Nope, Brown, Horford, Tatum, Irving. Whatever I said the first time. <laughs> uh, I'm not really interested in Marcus Smart. Uh, although he's probably okay on DraftKings. I just, I don't trust him. I can't really get a, well, you know what? 33 in his last game, two games worth of 29, a 26. You need him to get to like 28 on Fandle. That's probably my my problem with it. He, there's just it's it's really hard from hit for him to acquire value above and beyond. Marcus Morris 47 and 49. Um, that's probably not horrible. But obviously, the the key takeaway for this game is going to be whether or not Kyrie plays. Well, hopefully he doesn't. Um, that will really open things up on the Sixers. Or Celtics. On to the Sixers now. Oh, God, it's too early for this nonsense. This is just an ugly set of games. Okay, Ben Simmons is 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. What is his his line needs to be ridiculous because it's probably really high in this area that I'm pointing out on my monitor that you can't see and then really low in this area on uh, my monitor that you can't see. Nah, it's just it's been a lot better lately. One... Two, three, four, five of his last eight, five of his last seven have been uh, higher than a point per possession by like a significant margin. End of December, he cratered, but he's been up in January. Last two games, not the best, but it's interesting to see. I don't really love the price. He needs to get to 41. Sixers basically just haven't been playing. Just permanent rest. Alright, 
so the thing, like the Sixers take away, or the Celtics take away threes at a pretty big rate, especially corner threes. They're number one in denying corner threes, and they're number seven in just denying threes in general. Doesn't really affect Ben Simmons. So my only concern is that how, what's his turnover rate looking like? It's really bad, right? Where is it? Yeah, really, really, really bad. <sighs> he, uh, I'm not totally off of him. I don't expect him to pop up though. Dario Saric, on the other hand, is going to be a lockity lock, lock, lock for me. 5,300 on Fandle. You need him to get to 26. Um, he's just in and around there all the time. And if he's going to be playing 30 minutes, like, that's just, I'm in. Uh, on Fandle, he's a 1. That price is ludicrous. I'm just making sure I'm not overthinking something here. Oh, let's take a look and see how this team is with JJ Redick off the floor. It's a big takeaway here. So, it's one of those days where NBA WoW he like doesn't load correctly. That it is. Awesome. Maybe we'll get back to that. Sometimes NBA WoW is weird. But yeah, now Saric, I mean, that's just on a per minute basis for this year. You would expect him to get 29, and he needs 26 for value. That's a no-brainer. Absolute no-brainer. Um, 6,100 price tag is a little bit more pricey on DK, but I see no problems with it. Embiid is 10,000 on FanDuel and 9,400 on DK. Uh, so he needs 50. Um, he's done it once in the last four. He had 47 in the last one. I really want to see that NBA Wowie data. I don't know why it's not loading. It's just not letting me... There's no teams. There's no, there's no recent queries. I can't even do the... Oh, okay. There, now we're dancing. Now nah, we're dancing. You had to trick it. Okay, so Reddick on. I really hope this points in like a direction where it makes Dario Saric look like a world beater. All right, Redick on, Redick off. You would think this would be not good for Ben Simmons, but we'll see. Yeah, so Ben Simmons has been worse with him off. Sarich has been basically neutral. Covington and Embiid basically neutral. Nobody really gets any sort of bump. It's all just indifference to performance. And that makes sense. Uh, you know, Reddick's not some guy that, like, dominates the ball. When he has the ball, he's generally taking threes and looks. It's not He's not a creator for himself. So a lot less to fill. If he's not there... You know, Ben Simmons is just going to scatter that ball to whoever else is there. Now, Bobby Covington, 5,300 on FanDuel would be 26. Um, he has not been good lately. Yeah, look at that. Amazing through the mid-November, cratered at the end of November. Got himself back up to a point per possession in the mid part of December and now in his last five he's been averaging like 0 0.8 0 0.7 fantasy points per minute that's just really that's bad I wonder if he's hurt that's just really really bad for someone that's you know a good belt like a solid starter
Um, I don't love the matchup, but it's hard to say no altogether. Bayless is 3500 on FanDuel, so minimum salary. With Redick out, he should be seeing increased minutes. I don't love the idea of it because I don't think that he's very good. But, like, there's, there's upside there, I guess. Um, let's see, Jared Bayless. So if he plays 30 minutes, for him to get to value, you know, you want him to get to 20 points. So you'd be looking at 0 0.67 points per minute. Um, so basically anything, any orange line above where I'm drawing my line, you know, he has that ability to do that. Um, you know, he's not like the linchpin of a lineup or anything, but that's value. Uh, at 4200 on DK, I wouldn't touch him at all. That's a FanDuel-only price. And then TJ McConnell is sort of like the inverse, although he's still in play on FanDuel. Um, I'd say he's a FanDuel 2, but he's a he's probably a DK 1. He's 4400 He's going to play 30-plus minutes. Um, and you can get knights like TJ McConnell having 47 you just have to do it. Like he's, it's a great spot for him. Not super reliant on the three. He's more of a mid-range guy. So it's not bad. It's a lot of Philly. I'll go to Cleveland now. Oh, <coughs> sorry, wrong pipe. Cavs one eighteen point five implied total. First on the night, they are eleven point favorites against Orlando. There we go. I think you could hear me. Who knows? Does it really matter? Am I saying anything of value? Not really. LeBron is 12.5 on FanDuel. Why? Why is his price that high? Two straight games of 60s, but two straight games of 30s before that. And three out of his last six have been in the 30s. I mean, there's, on a four-game slate like this, there's a no value popping up. There's basically no chance that I have LeBron James. It's a, you know, it's a good matchup for him and all, but if you want him, take him on DK. Otherwise, I'll pass. That's just a ludicrous price for right now. What do they know that we don't? Isaiah is 5,700 on both sides. Now, that's a guy I will take. Um, he needs 28 for value on FanDuel. He got 25 in the last one. Didn't exactly play well. Um, he's a two for me. The price is just, you know, he should be way higher than that. Um, absolutely. I love it. it. Makes me happy at least, but I don't think I'm going to be in the minority there. After that, JR, no. Kevin Love is not really in the best spot. He needs 37. Got there in the last two. Um, Orlando cuts off the three ball a lot, though, which, you know, a decent amount of Kevin Love's value. Dwayne Wade, 52, so you would need 26 out of Wade. Not a ton of upside in that number, though. I don't... There's probably another guy that I'd like to look at on the Cavs, but I'm going to have to dig in because right now nobody's jumping off the page. I don't like those salaries. Um, well, it's not... Uh, yeah, it's... It could really only be Kevin Love. And I don't like it. 
It's just too expensive. I'd rather just have Isaiah. Go to Orlando. The Magic, 107.5 implied total. Fifth on the night, actually. Which is not bad for a team that's an 11-point underdog. We'll see how that shakes out when the real lines come out for uh, the Rockets game and the Celtics game, though. So first up is Aaron Gordon, 7,500 on FanDuel. How different are my projections? 33. It's, okay, so that's I'm, I'm right in line. I'm not crazy. Uh, he needs to get to 38, which seems possible. Um, he's done it once in his last six. Hasn't exactly been exceptional lately. I'd love to know. Yeah, started off so hot and then just cratered in November. Got back up again and got hot, but you know, just not been amazing lately. Um, yeah, I don't, I never like him. I think it's an interesting spot because of the high total in that game, but I probably won't end up with him. Never Google's 5,700, that's 27. Uh, I actually like that a lot. It's a, the Cavs are... Pretty terrible against people that shoot three balls. So, you know, Fournier gets his shots up. He might even be, well, the price isn't good enough for him to be a two, but I like like him a lot. Jonathan Simmons now, 4,500. And I'm wondering why this is popping off the page so much. How much did they drop his salary? So he was 5,800 a week ago. Now down to 4,500. So you need 22 out of Simmons. Uh, not the best stretch. Four of his last four of his last five games that he has played have been bad. But he had one 28 point game, which would be, you know, perfectly acceptable at that salary. Um, Anything weird in his performance? Yeah, he's not been not very good this year, so that makes sense. This is going to be a really ugly line. Look at that. Jonathan Simmons was good for like two weeks, and they were probably the two weeks that Aaron Gordon was out. It doesn't change the fact that at his price, at his usage, at his minutes, um, I'm going to have a bunch of them. I just I don't see an alternative. Other than that, I'm fine on this team. Although, Alfred Payton at 6,700, you would need 33. If he's going to do it against any team, it's probably the Cavs because they're terrible. Defensively, that is. Um, but they give up so many threes, and that's just not the Alfred Payton strong suit. So, Go to Houston now. This one's going to be weird, so it's going to take some time to talk it through. So James Harden is expected to play. And he's expected to play like 24 minutes or something along those lines. Trevor Ariza and Gerald Green are both hurt. So you would expect to see value in Mba Mute, potentially. PJ Tucker, potentially. Uh, so let's just let's just try to hash this out. So Chris Paul is 10-4 on FanDuel, 9,500 on DK. Rockets, uh, I have as five-point favorites at home against the Timberwolves, uh, which would be second on the night. So you need Paul to get to 50 and change. Um, he's done it twice without Harden. I 
I mean, I'd much rather have Chris Paul at 10-4 than LeBron at 12-5. I'm not wild about it, though. Uh, Eric Gordon is 6,800. If Harden's playing 25 minutes, I don't really have much interest in Eric Gordon. Um, Clint Capella. I have some interest in. 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Uh, you need 32 out of Cap Nope, 37 out of Capella. He's done it. He's had two 40-point games in the past two weeks. 135-pointer. Um, on DK, he's a 2. On FanDuel, he's probably a 3 for me. Just don't totally trust him. Ryan Anderson is 4,500. Um, that's not the worst. 22... Doesn't feel like the type of game that Ryan Anderson would go bananas in, though. And then Mba Mute is 3,500 on FanDuel, 3,200 on DK. I'm not entirely sure we could look at any of these guys, but they're going to be kind of chalky. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't. I prefer Mba Mute to PJ Tucker, but it's a narrow window. I thought that was going to look a little bit better. Whoops. Did I spell Ryan Anderson's name wrong, or did I just delete that? I don't know, I must have put an extra space in it or something. And obviously, you can't touch Harden. If he's only playing 25 minutes, he can still put up 50 fantasy points, but you know you're not betting on that. Minnesota should look a little bit better. 106.5 implied total, which would be sixth. <coughs> Wiggins burned me two nights ago. Probably gonna burn me again tonight. Yeah, 6,200 on Fanduel, 5,800 on DK. You need 30 out of Wiggins. Um, he's done it three times in his last eight. I'm hoping with the weird rotations and the lack of Ariza, this fits him a little bit better. Towns, 9,200, so you're looking for 45 out of Towns. Done it one, two, three times in his last eight. Um, I like Towns more than any of the other big names, I think. Not enough to go crazy, though. Like, no, nothing is popping off the page. Jimmy Butler is 10,000 on FanDuel and 8,800 on DK, which is comical. God, my projections just dramatically over or underrate Jimmy Butler. I have no idea why. Look at that. That is, you very rarely see guys just get so much better and better and better. He's been, last five games, 1.4 fantasy points per minute. And he's basically been above 1.2 since... I don't know, the end of mid-December. Which, if that's the case, and you're getting that, you know, 1.2. You're looking at 40 and change. I mean, uh, my numbers are not going to make him pop up, but on DK, he's a 2 for me. Not really interested in Teague. Taj is 5,600. I 
needing 28. Done it one, two, three, four, four. Yeah, like, Taj is just kind of always in play. I was so wrong about him a couple nights ago. Even though I had him. Last game, Blazers and Pacers. Portland, 108.5 implied total. Which is fourth. And I don't think that there's any, there's no, like, news or anything for this particular game. So, just is what it is. CJ, 8,300. That's just a really ridiculously high price for him right now. You need him over 40. He's played eight games in January. He's been over 40. One, two, three, four, five times. Two without Dame. This must be, he must be playing really well. Yeah, wow, what happened here? CJ finally getting it together. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a single problem with that. Are either of those guys good offensive rebounders for their positions? CJ, no, Dane, yes. CJ is a three. Um, still, you know that price is still pretty. Well, it's just a three. Dame, ninety four hundred. That's forty seven. He's done it twice since he's been back. I think this is <clears throat> a really big game for Dame. Um. You know, had a day's rest. Pacers are coming to them all the way across the country. Uh, I can I can get behind some Dame here. No thank you on Aminu. Nurkic is 6,500, so you're looking for 32 out of him. Uh, he's done that a couple times in the past eight games. There's no Miles Turner, so uh, I think Nurkic might be my center now. How do Dame and Nurkic, or how does Nurkic correspond to Dame and CJ? I would probably take Nurkic and then whoever is a better correlation with him for the night. Uh, they're both pretty close. Okay. Well, now it's just going to depend on salaries and the way other stuff fits. <sighs> okay. Let's check out Indiana. Pacers, 105 implied total. Seventh on the night. Um, we know what we're getting here. It's a tough road trip. Oladipo, 9,300. That's a decent matchup. Needs 46. 49 in his last one. Pretty decent since he's been back. I'm fine with Oladipo. Thad Young needs 30. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that. Boyan needs 21. Not a huge fan of that. Darren Collison needs 25. I'd entertain that. We're pretty good on a per minute basis this year. Um, I'll roll dice on Darren Collison, potentially. Price isn't horrible. Corey Joseph, 4,300, needs 20 and change. He's been really good in his last two. He's been really coming on. Nope. Coming out of a crater. <laughs> he had been up here. Uh, that I mean, that line's going to turn itself. Those two are hurting him. But if you throw those two out, these are all come from here you know it's 
point seven. That's not bad. Yeah, I mean he's gonna show up. It's a bonus six thousand. So you need thirty. He's done that once without Turner. Um, no, he's done that. No, Turner played in that game. I'd just rather have Nurkic. But he's not in a bad spot. There's the short list, everybody. It's a dreadful day. I would not be playing if I hadn't already been in four rounds of the single entry series, but not that that's going well at this point. Two caches to start, two misses past two nights. But, you know, they take your best four, so got a shot. Just need to cash in four of the next, or two of the next four, and I should be in a decent spot. I just want to see, like, I don't know, top 25 would be, I think, an accomplishment. So let's check out what this optimizer looks like for FanDuel. I can't even imagine what it's going to look like right now. Nothing showed up to me that looked like good. So we shall see. Okay, so 100% Sarich and almost 100% Simmons and Isaiah. So all of that looks totally normal to me. After that, we'd be looking at lineups like that. Might be hard to see, so expand those screens. I'd be fine with Fournier too. So that's nine lineups then. I don't mind that second one. Paul, Thomas, Wiggins, Fournier, Brown, Simmons, Sabonis, Sarich, and Bede. I'm surprised that I'm able to get Paul and Embiid. And I'm really surprised that Yusuf Nurkic isn't what pops up here. There is one Nurkic lineup. It's the last one. So Kyrie, Isaiah, Fournier, Wade, LeBron. Yeah, that would not be the lineup. Only two lineups come with Nurkic. Paul, McConnell, Oladipo, Smart, Brown, Simmons, Gordon, Saric, Nurkic. Hmm, I'm really surprised that Nurk. There's just not enough other uh, high-level good dudes out there today. Everybody else is priced a little too high at the top shelf outside of center. Okay. Well, that's where we're at there. Let's check out DK. excited to take the time tonight to set up the new computer. Picked it up last night. Too aggravated. If that Jordan Bell news doesn't happen and I have a sweat, I probably set it all up last night, but all I wanted to do was just go to bed, wake up, and hope for the best. Okay. So, those are the DK lineups. Um, let's refresh this. So, McConnell, number one, not surprised. Butler, Lillard, Capella, Nurkic, Saric, Thomas, and Simmons are next. So, I think Thomas would need to be checked off, and Capella... But to do that, you end up, makes me think that, oh, it's giving me Chris Paul, which is interesting. So, like, I don't want to, I wouldn't want Tice, I'd probably want Jeff Green over Tice. But I wouldn't be stoked about that. That looks a little bit better, but that's just a bit too heavy. I wouldn't, Sarge, McConnell, and Simmons is a little scary. No way would I take Al Jefferson. 
um, Thomas Smart, Simmons, Covington, Capella, McConnell, Tatum, Paul is not bad. Getting a lot of Chris Paul, which is interesting. I'm not sure I share the same view. I don't know. Like I'd I think I'd rather have Dame at 87 than Paul at 95. Just from the, I, just, I think that Rockets game is going to be weird. But anyway, those are those are some uh, crunched lineups to start the day, and that's it for me. Uh, as I said at the beginning, you know, no, no live before lock tonight. Uh, I'm gonna get the the new PC set up, and with this particular four game slate, uh, it's not super interesting. It's possible we we wouldn't even get any real news for the Rockets. Wolves game or the Blazers Pacers game so basically you're banking on those first two games and uh, it's just not that exciting of a slate um, so we'll be back in the morning for or Friday morning for this video but um, other than that best of luck you guys know the drill like subscribe do all that good stuff and thank you to everybody that watches this you guys are the reason that I picked up the new uh, streaming PC so no more uh, X split crashes in the middle of the streams. We're going to be able to do big things now. So thank you guys. It's all because of you guys. Thank you.